Hi, I'm Underbelly, and you suck at producing. Volume. How loud really is it? And how much volume is just too much? To answer some of these questions and more, let me tell you about my rapper friend, Ross, the dopest gringo alive. Back in middle school, Ross was constantly ridiculed and beaten due to his putrid fish smell and the tattered rags he was forced to wear as clothing every day to school. After doing some online research, Ross found that the only way to stop the constant beatings would be to inject himself with an experimental serum that would increase volume in all parts of his body. Soon, Ross towered over all the other school children, but because of his horrible, horrible smell, was still ostracized from their social gatherings. Naturally, Ross began to inject himself more and more, and was found dead years later, stuck in his bathroom door, wondering when the volume got away. Today, we're going to learn how to control our own volume and learn a lesson from Ross to not go over the limit. I'm Underbelly. Let's get started. Okay, so check it. Volume is measured in decibels, or dB. Zero dB is our reference point and also our ceiling, meaning that if our volume starts to go above zero dB into the positive ranges, our sound will start to distort, much like Ross's body image did. The key is to always maintain plenty of headroom, or difference, between our peak volume levels and 0 dB. The other thing you should know about dB is that it's a logarithmic form of measurement, meaning that the value of a single decibel will increase the closer we get to 0 dB. For example, the difference in perceived loudness between 0 dB and minus 6 is going to be greater than the difference between minus 6 and minus 12, even though that the jump and decibel level is the same between the two. Actually, 6 dB is correlated with a doubling of volume level, so going from minus 6 to 0 will be a doubling of perceived loudness. Let's go inside our computer devices and see these ideas in action. Okay, so check it. Notice that we have the exact same clips that we had in the first lesson. And if you don't already have these, I highly suggest downloading them uh, in the video description below. Okay, so let's just double click on the drums here. And notice that my warping is on. Make sure that warping is enabled. And uh, warping is a pretty complicated subject within Ableton that I'll have to tackle in depth in another video. But for now, just think of it as a way for us to enable looping or playing the clip over and over again until our ears bleed. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and play this clip with the waveform right here. And we're gonna pay attention to the volume meters, the green volume meters over here. And notice that there's gonna be a solid volume meter and a transparent one above it. And we're just gonna pay close attention to the relationship between those volume meters and the waveform over here. Are you guys ready? Okay, three, two, one, blast off. Okay, so pay attention to the green volume meters here. All right, and so you'll notice that on the transparent ones, there's these two thin lines on top, and those are the peak volume levels, okay? And we can actually see where those are hitting uh, with this circular number right here. Uh, the peak volume of this clip is at minus 4.15, so we have a decent amount of headroom or space between our peak volume levels and 0 dB, our ceiling, okay? And so the transparent green bars over there uh, represent the peak volume of our signal, but below that, uh, we have some solid green bars. Let's, let's pay attention to those, okay? Uh, yo, uh, okay, uh. Mm, yeah, mm hmm. All right. Okay, so the solid green bars below are the average loudness of the clip. In other words, the RMS or the root mean signal, if you guys are some math nerds out there. And those are just taking the long uh, 
the long haul of the clip, just the average loudness over time. It's the long view, it's looking ahead. It's what Ross didn't do when he pumped himself full of experimental serum, okay? You gotta have the long view in your mind, okay? So let's go ahead and minimize uh, the waveform. Remember, uh, solid is average loudness, while the transparent green is the peak loudness. And we're gonna drag this volumeter way up. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, look at it go. Wow, it's so big now. And uh, you'll notice that we have the dB markers over on the side. They're getting closer and closer together as we reach minus infinity dB because dB is a logarithmic form of measurement, okay? And we can actually hear this in action. Let's go ahead and press play on the clip and we're gonna lower the volume slowly, okay? So just press play. And we're gonna move this triangle down. And so at minus six dB, these drums are about as half as loud as they were at minus zero. Sorry, excuse me, just zero dB. And then half as loud as that at minus 12. And half as loud as that, and that, and that, and that, and reach till we reach minus infinity dB. Wow! Okay, wow, now that's super loud. Now we're above zero dB. Uh, we're actually at 1.82 positive dB. And if we raise the volume on our master track as well, we're gonna get some crazy distortion right now. Check, check it, blammo! Oh, wow! Jeez Louise, gosh! That's some loud stuff right there. And it's starting to sound like Uncle Joe's farts uh, because we're going above the ceiling. We're reaching past zero dB and our volume is starting to distort, or as some like to call it, clip, if you're talking like a producer. Okay, so we gotta make sure that doesn't happen so we don't start sounding like Uncle Joe on the toilet seat, okay? This concludes today's lesson on volume. If you have any additional questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I'm Underbelly, see you next week.